Okay, our next producer will be Andy Scrosheen. Andy's a young producer from Clear Lake, South Dakota, and he will be visiting with you about his hoop bar. Again, my name is Andy Stroshine. Um We built uh, two hoop barns in 2012 just to uh, a way to expand our farm operation and our cat op operation. Um, it's worked very well for us so far. Uh, the two buildings are oriented uh, east and west. There's a 14-foot concrete bunk apron, uh, Drover's Alley, on the south side of the buildings. We use crushed concrete in the back of the pens. Um, there's a fence on the back of the alleyway um, with gates on each end, the Drover Alley, so we can lock the cattle in the back of the pens. Um, there's a 720 head total capacity. Uh, the outside feeding alley on the south side of the building. And we have an adjacent working facility. Uh, the south building is a 43 by 320. Uh, there's four pens housing 80 head each. Uh, there's three waters in that building. Um, we have in our third and fourth pens, uh, we have a shared water. In the first and second pens, we went with the double water um, so we can medicate the pens or the waters individually. Um, in the north building, we have this 43 by 400 uh, with six pens. Um, we have four 80 head pens and two 40 head pens, which works good for our operation. Uh, we get a lot of two-way cattle in, coming in that are in for 30 days. Um, semis hold roughly 40 heads, so works good for that. Um, there's three shared waters in that building. We average uh, 43 square feet a head. It gives us 12 inches of bunk space per head. Uh, we've been feeding steers and heifers both. We like to see calves come in around 700 pounds, um, feed a lot of yearling cattle, 1,000, 1,050 pounders, and been feeding a lot more two-way cattle lately, um, and we market weights usually 1,350 to 1,450. Uh, feeding, uh, we feed once a day when it's uh, cold, uh, twice a day when it's hot. Um, I guess our Rations there, uh, we feed dry rolled corn, modified wet distillers. Um, for our roughage, we mix uh, grass hay, corn socks, and oat straw together. Um, corn silage, uh, we have a 35% high moisture yearage and a liquid supplement. Uh, for bedding our buildings, uh, we usually use corn stalks. Um, we drive on the outside of the buildings and blow it in, uh, which is makes it a lot easier not having to go into the buildings. Uh, like he said earlier, the cattle love it when we bed. Um, it's just nice being on the outside. Um, we usually average about two to two and a half bales a week um, with corn stalks. Uh, when we use wheat straw, I've noticed anywhere from one and a half to two bales a week. Uh, we scrape the apron twice a week. Um, it takes about an hour, hour and a half to scrape the aprons off. Um, in the summertime when it was really nice there, in, the, in the early late summer, early fall, uh, we get by with scraping once a week. Um, we have two months outside storage uh, and stacking pads on each end of the, both of the buildings. Um, and then directly land applied if feasible. Um, the scraping, I, one thing I like about the cattle with the Drover's Alley is usually when we have time to scrape is when it's wet or snow. Um, we can lock the cattle in the back. They never have to go outside in the mud or in, in the snow. We can do what we need to do and it's uh, don't have to haul the manure out right away. The buildings are totally cleaned in the spring and fall and we have our manure management plan with the South Dakota Department of Ag. Uh, ventilation, we have a one-piece curtain on the north wall. Um, the 320-foot building has three segments and the 400-foot building has four segments. Uh, the curtains are completely open when it's 40 degrees or, and above. Um, when it's 32 to 40 degrees, we usually leave them about half open and then completely closed when, it's, when it doesn't get above freezing during the day. There's a 10-inch gap in here. 
Um, when the curtains are completely closed, um, it allows for the vent, the air to get through there in the winter time without that cool breeze. It keeps fresh, crisp air uh, blowing through the buildings, uh, keeps the smell down, um, just keeps the steam and everything out of the buildings. What has worked well? Uh, we use crushed concrete in the back of our buildings in the uh, bed pack. Uh, we think it's worked very well because it's, it's very hard, but it provides extra drainage, which keeps a really nice bed pack. We went with wood building or wood bunks on our buildings. Uh, they're covered by the awning, so the the set, sun and some of the outside elements don't get to it so bad, and uh, they're easily replaced and they're cost effective. The cattle are always inside when the pen is scraped which is nice, you can do it at any, any weather. Easy to sort cattle with a gated fence on the bunk apron or the drover's alley. You can lock everything in the alleyway, um, run them in or, in or by when we're going to sort. Uh, it just makes things a lot easier. And the buildings are cooler in the summer and drier in the winter than our outside lots were. What has surprised me, the buildings have taken a lot more bedding and management than an outside lot. Uh, and more labor is involved with scraping and uh, bedding twice a week, but the hours are more routine and scheduled. What I changed, we put a cage around the shared waters because when we put the cage wa or the two waters in there, we didn't have a cage over them, so the cattle were staying in the waters. Um, so we put that around there to keep them from doing that. Um, and we, replaced, we put a lot of sucker rod in when we built it. We replaced a lot of that with uh, square tubing. It was a lot easier to weld and held up a lot stronger. We added a third bar to the neck rail above the fence line bunk. Um, the cattle were getting their heads through and then they were able to get far enough ahead where they're getting their feet in the bunks. Uh, when we put that in there, that eliminated that whole problem. What I'd like to change, um, when we got our doors, uh, they put way too long of chains in there. Uh, the cattle would get them out from behind the walls and they'd step on them and snap them. So you'd go to open them and they wouldn't be there anymore. So we changed those. Um, and then if we extend the awning a little bit further, um, I know it probably won't make a lot of difference with the South Dakota winds. Uh, blowing the snow around probably wouldn't make a whole lot of difference, but I think it might have a little bit.